I'm here by myself today. And Russ has gone off to England. Mm, I guess he's enjoying the lovely spring weather, visiting Stonehenge or some strange place like that. But I'm here. I want to talk about net neutrality today because we never did get around to talking about that last week. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. And you type in AAA porn or whatever it is you're typing in. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We, I was at a PG show. And I'm really yeah. excited to be here. I'm glad you're here because somebody needs to know what's going on. That's right. Okay, so now, now somebody has to drink this. <laughs> <laughs> it's another day. It's another episode. Yeah, he's looking at the wrong camera. You oh, oh, you move my, you put my camera over here. Eh, there you cut. Go. Basically, forget you ever saw that. I, I think actually forgetting you ever saw that would really be a good <laughs> idea at this point. First, a news item. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, they arrest, They are in the process of arresting four hackers that uh, were involved in hacking Yahoo in 2014. And the interesting thing about this is it, it represents the first time they actually have a, a documented arrest case where two members of the FSB, which is like the Russian part of the Russian government that is like the FBI, uh, were actually involved, and they they arrested two people that were acting as hackers for hire. So this is a pretty interesting case. I'm sure if you want to tune in to some of the other shows, like Hack Naked News, they're probably going to talk about that in more detail. But we'll talk about net neutrality today. But I couldn't help but bring that up because I just was reading that story when I came in. It, it just like broke today. So a pretty exciting thing. So we want to talk about net neutrality. And Net neutrality is this thing that, that a lot of people hear about because you see people talk about it on CNN and on Fox and all these networks and everyone talks about it. But it's a very complicated thing. And back in the old, or even today, if you take an intro to computing class for the internet, you'll always hear people say, who owns the internet? And, and, and they always say the, the answer is that no one owns the internet. It belongs to us all. But this is total crap. Of course someone owns the internet, and the person who owns the internet is ISPs. And so an internet service provider f forms the backbone of the entire internet, which means that they get to make the rules, essentially. Well, so here's what happened. The net neutrality rules said that ISPs were subject to the same rules as telecommunications, which we'll call telcos, were subject to, that means phone companies. And that's been going on for a long time. And all the phone companies were originally subject to this thing like the Telecommunications Act of 1933, and then there was another one later in the 90s and so on. But one of the things that's critical to the telco acts was that everyone had to be provided with the same level of service for the same price. So that meant that, that they couldn't single people out and downgrade their service because they didn't like the neighborhood or they couldn't single them out for whatever reason that they wanted to single them out. And the idea was that uh, telco was a public utility so that it should be treated as such and therefore it was managed that way. Well, today with net neutrality, ISPs can do all kinds of nasty tricks. Like for instance, they can change your bandwidth. And you say, well, gee, Doug, that's okay. Why don't they just change my bandwidth? Well, they could, and it might be fair, depending on what you pay. So if, if they're providing you with this level of bronze service versus double platinum service, then what happens is you may get different levels of bandwidth. And the bandwidth refers to how much upload speed and how much download speed that you actually have. And if you go on Google and you type, check my internet speed, there's all kinds of websites that will tell you what your upload and your download speeds actually are. Now, for most users, those speeds vary a lot from day to day to day. And so what happens is the ISP can do what is called throttling. And they can choose to throttle certain connections based on who knows what criteria. But net neutrality says that if I pay for the gold plan and you pay for the gold plan, then we both get the same level of service. But that, if those rules go away, they could say you're on the gold plan, he's on the gold plan, but we're going to use some other criteria to determine what level of bandwidth service you actually get. And that's a little bit scary to me. The other piece of net neutrality that worries a lot of people is that ISPs would be allowed, without net neutrality rules, to sell your data without your permission. So that means they could take your browsing 
They could take your behavior online. They could model it. They could create marketing paradigms or whatever. I pick some fancy you know, terms, holistic marketing paradigms, and put that together and use that to sell to, say, Amazon. And maybe you like that because that means you get ads for things that you want to see on Amazon. But it also means they could profile you and decide that maybe they're going to throttle your usage because you're not going to sites they like. They could throttle other people, like, say, Amazon, if Amazon doesn't do what they want. And all that adds up to some really scary kinds of stuff with these providers. So what I did was during a blizzard, which was not, is not happening now, but or it didn't really happen at all. But during the blizzard, I made a video I wanted to show you about some of this stuff to try to illustrate how this bandwidth and throttling actually takes place. And then we'll come back. Okay? So... Roll film. Thanks, Doug. This is Doug. So, look, this is a cool picture I drew with Cisco Packet Tracer, which actually would let me set all this stuff up and see if it would actually work and all that. I'm just making a grossly oversimplified version of the Internet to talk to you a little bit about what's going on with net neutrality in the sense of what they can do. Now, with net neutrality, they basically say that everyone, so that means me, who's a superstar, that guy who might be in a band, and pathetic old you, are all basically getting the same level of service for the same price. So that means if, if, I, if I went out and bought the platinum fiber plan, and, and all of you did too, we should theoretically get the same level of service. That was what they applied to the telecommunications company, so uh, way back when. Now, without net neutrality, it means the ISP has a lot of leeway, as, we're going to, as I'm going to talk about on the show, because Russ went to Stonehenge. I probably already said that, but I'm not live, so you know who knows what's going on. The, the world may have ended. Um, then you're still hearing this broadcast. But, look, so I've got some, some people out here that are providing services. I've got Nile, a big shopping network, Voodoo, Nizde. Hula and Triple X Prevert. And if any of these companies wants to go up, not except Triple X, and we can't be sponsored by Triple X Prevert, but if any of these other companies uh, who are misrepresented here would like to sponsor my show, you just feel right free to go ahead and we'll change your name to something correct. But anyway, um, I'll probably get sued by some company called Nizday now that's going like, you know. <laughs> but here we go. So let's just say that without net neutrality, the ISP decides to use a more sophisticated pricing model. I'm trying to keep this unbiased. I, I'm not, I'm, I like the idea of net neutrality, but let's just keep this unbiased. So the ISP says we're going to do two things in order to make this work better. We're going to look at the habits of our customers. And we're going to, unlike what they could do with net neutrality, which is say, we're going to look at the habits of our customers and we're going to decide what levels of service we're going to have. We're going to have the bronze, the silver, the gold, and the platinum, and the double platinum, and the triple platinum, and, and whatever plans to sell you based on what you want to do. Instead, they're going to look at these three people, and, and obviously there would be a lot more than that, and put them into groups, and then sell them the same level of service only they're going to give them different levels of bandwidth. And that is something that is possible under this model. Now, I don't know how successful that kind of discrimination, and I'm putting air quotes around it, because it, it, the, dis, the term discrimination is true, but now we're not discriminating, at least we hope, based on any kind of you know, cultural traits. We're discriminating based on a couple of things. Location, we may, and, and here's the best one. Let's look at what you do. So there's superstar me. I shop at Nile every day. I buy so much stuff that that ups and FedEx and even you know people come out of the woodwork to deliver stuff. They put a drop outside my house because I buy so much stuff. And I and I watch Nizday and Voodoo all the time. That's all I do really is order things from Nile, sit in my uh, house and 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 watch video streaming from these two services. So I use a lot of bandwidth, but I buy a lot of product. 
Now the ISP can determine that to some degree. With, with net neutrality, they can still see what you go to. They can watch it. They can track what you do. But if without net neutrality, they can take my information and sell it to these companies without my getting a cut. I, I'm a lot more favorable on some of this if I get a cut, but I don't get a cut. So the ISP tracks that I buy things on Nile, and they sell that information back to Nile, and they subsequently use that to subsidize their own pockets. So the CEO gets a huge bonus this year. Or they could pass that along to me in the form of bandwidth. Now because I shop at Nile, and even maybe they could advertise that, buy a hundred dollars worth of things every week at Nile and get improved bandwidth. I get this big fat fiber connection full blown and that supports my viewing habits. Great. That is a kind of discrimination. So let's go to pathetic old you. Now you don't have as much money as I do and primarily all you do is you go to Hula and you watch things for free. You don't even have a subscription to Hula. So you watch the free stuff on Hula, and that's about all you do. And occasionally you might go to Nile once in a while and buy like some ramen noodles or something. Because you don't have any money or whatever, and you're spending all your money on this pipe. Well, the ISP now with you is not getting as much money in revenue from Nile and Voodoo and Nisday and all these kind of people as they get from me. So they make a determination based on one that they can't sell very much information about you because there just isn't very much. And you don't use expensive services that pay the ISP for those services. So maybe they just decide that you're going to get throttled. So they cut you back to around a 56k kind of connection. Let's do the guy who might be in a band. And these are people that lived in a building with me. Actually, I was the guy who might be in a band probably, but I actually was in a band, so there was no mic. But enough about that. Maybe someday we'll talk about that. This guy primarily shops at Nile and watches triple X prevert. Because this person doesn't use these services like Voodoo and Nisday and Hula, they're not as excited about giving that person enough bandwidth. So the Nile shopping keeps them out of this category, but maybe they don't like triple X prevert. Or more likely, triple X prevert doesn't pay them the same level of support that some of these others do. And so they subsequently throttle this person's activity. Now, let me take this a step more into the darkness. I need some sound effects here or something. I don't have any, so you just have to live with it. But we need some like ominous sound. Dun, dun, dun. Now let's say the ISP decides to get really nasty. Because they don't approve of that guy who might be in a band, because of that person's viewing habits, maybe they decide to throttle this pipe. So now, instead of that guy who might be in a band going over this nice, speedy fiber pipe, that connection's going over this slower pipe, and these are all the same pipe really, but going over this throttled pipe in order to get to triple X preverb because they don't approve of triple X prevert. In fact, maybe they don't approve of it so much they send it over this really, really slow connection that they subsidize. And so even though this person has a, a pays for the same thing as I do, they don't get the same throughput that I would get for the same kind of viewing because I spend most of my time on these kind of sites that pay a lot of money back. I'm gonna flip it to the other end for a second. Mr. ISP, this is the big shot ISP, this is somebody really important. Mr. ISP also can then, without net neutrality, go to these clients and offer them different levels of service for the same product without even telling them. So they may give Nile a big pipe because Nile actually pays a lot of money in or supports them or does whatever 
Voodoo, same thing. Nisday, the same thing. Hula and Triple X Prevert don't pay those premiums. Don't provide advertising revenue or whatever it is. I mean, I don't know what it is, but it could be all kinds of things. And it could even just be they don't like these two services. So the fact that they don't like them means they can throttle them down. I doubt they're going to do things like that because it's not very productive. But that's the kind of things that could be done. So just some concerns on that end to show it with a nice visual aid so that you could get a look at what this might look like. So big points. One, they can sell you the same levels of service but provide you different types of connectivity based on who knows what. They can also then provide different levels of connectivity through the internet even though you have the same levels of service. And they can track what you do and sell it to all these companies. So if Nile is paying for what they're selling, they give better throughput to Nile. If Hula decides they're not going to pay for that information, maybe they give them lousier throughput. If you think about it, they can even start working to put people out of business using that kind of model. So they say, we don't like Hula, so they don't pay us for our, what we're selling, so we're going to slowly throttle them to death. On the other hand, maybe Nile up here, well, we don't want to see that. No, it's nothing. It was nothing dramatic. Don't go back and freeze frame. It was just a configuration screen. And everybody's like, oh, what was he doing? But Nile buys all that inf information about the customers. So they give them the biggest, nicest pipe you can imagine. So that's just some quick uh, visual stuff there about it. We'll get back to the studio now. Back to you, Doug. Back to me on the other side. Thanks for watching that video. Thanks, Doug, for making that video this morning uh, and sharing it with us. I thought it would be helpful to see some how that kind of plays out. So big, big points in net neutrality are that do you have any rights? And one of those issues then becomes, you know, maybe you don't. If we do away with net neutrality and a provider can sell all your, your material to these different providers, like we had Nile and Nisday and all those kind of places on that picture, then what happens to you? Do you get anything back? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. So that's, that's sort of one part of it. The throttling seems to be the bigger kind of issue buried in net neutrality. Now, let me flip it around for a second, and let me talk a little bit about why you might not want net neutrality. So one of the main arguments that people had about why net neutrality was bad, and it's, it, it was that maybe if you have to provide levels of service, and this is one of these economics things, so we could get all the charts and draw graphs and all these kind of fun things out, but the reality was that net neutrality is claimed to somewhat stifle the ISP's ability to provide new and innovative services. So that was sort of one. And the reason for that is because he said, well, if you go into an area, and this was the same telco stuff, you go into an area, say Providence, Rhode Island, and you're going to provide services. The idea of net neutrality was you have to provide you know, the same level of services at the same tiers for everyone there. And, and this is not to say that they have to give you the same service that they give to a large company, but it means that if you pay for a certain level of service, you have to get the same level of service that I do if we're both paying the same thing. So their argument was, if we can do things where this person's using user habits, so think back to the picture. So if you're somebody who just shops on Nile and you never go anywhere else, then maybe you don't need as much bandwidth. So even though you paid for gold service, what if I could throttle that person down and allow more bandwidth to be used for the people that were streaming video? that would make a better service overall for everyone and it would essentially lower costs. And, and I don't disagree with that, but the issue is whether or not that's exactly how that would play out. So it seems like at this point in time, there's a couple of big issues that I have concerns with about all this stuff. One of them is about control. And while net neutrality and telco and all this doesn't really s s explicitly limit things and encourage censorship, it essentially, it helps to prevent it from happening. I need Russ here to explain these nice things. I'm good with the tech stuff. But hey, he's not here, so we're, we're, we're lonely without you, Russ. But what if we start talking about who gets throttled? Because this was one of the key issues that happened with net neutrality, was what if 
ISPs start making decisions. Like you heard me talking on the video about XXX Prevert and Hula and the ISP not liking that. So what if your ISP decides they don't approve of hate speech? I'll flip it around. So now instead of something that maybe you don't disapprove of either, like XXX Prevert, what if they don't approve of hate speech and they say, we're going to start throttling traffic, not to you, but to websites. So here's a website, I won't give it a name, that has a lot of hate speech on it. And they say, we're going to start throttling that. Maybe they can do that without net neutrality. They can simply throttle it back. They can use all kinds of reasoning. That's censorship to me. That violates the First Amendment to me. But at the same time, you're going, but this isn't necessarily free speech. It's about commercial interests. And uh, where are the lawyers when you need them? In fact, I, I think I hear them knocking on the door right now because they're going to haul me off from that NISDAY company that I made up. Um, so you may have questions like that that you want to ask yourself. Should hate sites be filtered? Maybe if that's true, then maybe net neutrality is not for you. My big issues with net neutrality are pretty straightforward. Um, I don't want them selling my data. I really don't like that idea. I don't do anything really interesting on the internet. I, I mean, I, I all the time when I hear people go, oh, what about this? What about that? I'm like, wow, I haven't seen that. I, you know, but I don't necessarily want a provider taking that and selling it and making money off of it. So that's the greedy part of me that says, you know, I really am entitled to some cut of that. Now, now the, again, so to defend the ISP, the ISP's argument is, well, you do get something for that. Because when we sell that information, we pass those savings along to you. I don't know that they necessarily do that, but that's what their claim is going to be. Same thing with the throttling. So they say, well, we're going to throttle you back because you don't ever stream video from Hula. And, okay, we're going to pass those savings along to you in the form of more bandwidth for people that need it. We're going to lower costs. We're going to encourage innovation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all that sounds great. I just don't know if it's necessarily true. So there's some very serious and dire concerns in here. And I'm going to throw one more term out there to you and bring it up. And I, you know I'm going to say it. You aren't going to like it, but I'm going to say it anyway. What about fake news? Ooh. A popular term, and I'm not going to get into politics. I could. Oh, baby, could I get into politics? But I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. But I'm going to say fake news. It's like the knights who say knee. I'm going to say fake news to you. Um, he said it again. But what about fake news? What if, without net neutrality, ISPs, so pick one. I'm not going to name any names. They don't sponsor me either, so they don't get anything. But pick an ISP and say, what if that ISP decided they're going to come up with some kind of algorithm to decide what they think is fake news? And they decide that news site A and news site B are fakes. So they start throttling bandwidth to those sites and allowing more bandwidth to, say, some other site, C and D. Ooh. I mean, you, you, then you say, Doug, I'm going to open the big book of naive comments and go, companies never get involved in politics. Right. Keep thinking that. But I'm not going to either. I'm not. I'm not. I swear. So next week... Based on all this, next week, I, I think Russ is going to come back if the Druids don't have him. I, I, I've heard they do bad things to people, but uh, if, the, if the Druids got you, Russ, hey, man, I, it's aloha. But next week, we're going to talk about Tor. And Tor is a cool browser that allows you to start hiding some of your behavior on the internet. We're going to talk about how it works, how to install it. And so if you're interested in learning more about anonymous browsing and how that kind of thing works, be sure and tune in next week when hopefully Russ is back to entertain me and I can entertain him. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>